Thank you. Good morning. I'm Dominic Kasman. Um, I'm at Miami Cancer Institute. Thank you very much for the privilege of being here. Uh, I'm presenting for, um, oh, this is the wrong video. Oh, no, OK. Never mind. It's OK. It's OK. Sorry, I'm presenting for uh, Philippe Kunzler. I apologize. Uh, and, and this is a nucleation of an insulinoma in the pancreatic head. So these are my disclosures. So the patient was a 67-year-old male, um, came to the emergency room with recurrent hypoglycemia. Um, workup, including uh, PET dotatate, showed this 1.8-centimeter hypervascular lesion in the pancreatic head right here. Um, he, um, after you know, multiple discussions with the patient, he was uh, you know, interested in, in an operation. He had an appropriate comorbidity profile but very much wanted to avoid a uh, Whipple procedure. And considering the size, um, this was a biopsy-proven insulinoma, the decision was made to proceed with an enucleation of the lesion. Now, um, because this is in the head of the pancreas, uh, we decided to ask our uh, advanced gastroenterologist to place a pancreatic stent, which would help in identifying the um, pancreatic duct during the operation if necessary. And we proceeded with, uh, with plans for an enucleation with uh, the caveat that if necessary, we would perform uh, Whipple. So we start off by entering the lesser sac through the gastrocolic ligament. We mobilize the transverse colon, um, just as we would for a Whipple, and uh, up to the hepatic flexor, and here separating the mesocolon from the retroperitoneum, uh, gaining better access to um, the area anterior to the pancreas. We like to um, position the patient in um, steep reverse Trendelenburg to aid with retraction. And um, as you can see here, as we're uh, further opening our window, um, we identify the gastrocolic pedicle. Now, because we weren't sure if we were going to do an a, a Whipple, we mobilized only the peritoneum, which gave us adequate exposure. We then proceed with uh, ultrasound identification of the lesion, um, which we confirm is near the GDA. You can see there is the GDA. Um, but it's still something that can be enucleated. It's also far from the pancreatic duct, which is, which is identified there. We then continue with incising the peritoneum um, and mobilizing the uh, peripancreatic fat uh, as we start exposing this area. Because we were using the GDA as a landmark, um, we will actually uh, excise the hepatic artery lymph node, the anterior hepatic artery lymph node, and um, identifying the common hepatic artery, and then we will search for the GDA. We use uh, endocyanin green during a lot of our pancreatic resections uh, in a continuous infusion, which helps us identify the pancreatic parenchyma. So here we continue. Um, removing more, as you can see, this patient had a, a good amount of intra-abdominal fat, and so as necessary, we, re we resect um, fatty tissue to better expose our surgical area uh, dissection planes. So here's the GDA, or what we believe to be the GDA. Uh, we encircle it with a vessel loop, use um, ultrasound to confirm that it is the GDA. We check flow in the liver when this is occluded. Um, we use a retention, uh, uh, retraction stitch um, overlying the mass that helps us uh, manipulate it as we begin the resection. It, we, and we don't show it here, but we go back and forth with the ultrasound as necessary to confirm the, the dissection plane. And, um, and we use uh, the harmonic um, scalpel, the ultrasonic shears, to do the majority of our dissection here. Now, early on, we avoid the temptation of um, you know, being, being uh, overly meticulous with hemostasis. So this is a small bleeder, as we know, and as we saw on the, on the imaging and the ultrasound, this is a hypervascular lesion. And so um, as long as you can still see, um, you, you, you know, maybe a little bit of, of uh, direct pressure, but we allow ourselves a little bit of bleeding to not obscure the dissection plane, as I mentioned, especially at the beginning.
and then we continue uh, millimetric bites. As you can see, this is, you know, it's, it's not a large tumor, but it does take a lot of patience to slowly um, start dissecting around the lesion for a proper nucleation. Another thing I want you guys to, to pay attention to is how the assistant is using, using the, the suction device. Um, a lot of short bursts of suction, adequate assistance uh, in these cases are paramount to it going well, as, as it, probably most people in this room understand. Um, we use the suction device for retraction, um, for short bursts of suction as needed, and, um, and he, it's, it's very important for the assistant to understand how, how he can best use this. As our dissection proceeds, we are a little more um, liberal with the use of cautery for hemostasis. We now have a better idea of where our transection plane will be. And again, using small millimetric bites, you're able to, uh, to continue along that plane for the nucleation. The other thing that, um, that's important is proper camera angle. Uh, especially when we're when we're close like this, it's very easy to get disoriented during these operations and really any any operation of the pancreas, uh, minimally invasive especially. And so um, it's pivotal to have the the camera well oriented. We use a forty five degree scope, um, which is something that gives you extra flexibility in terms of of angling the the camera. And here we continue with a patient and tedious dissection. And that is the insulinoma. We mark it inside the abdomen um, as it's pretty uh, easy to get disoriented once it once removed from the abdomen. Hemostasis is confirmed, and um, we again use ultrasound to evaluate the the uh, resection cavity. You'll see there the pancreatic duct with the stent in place, which is far, relatively speaking, far from the, from the resection cavity. We leave a drain just because of the high incidence of uh, pancreatic leaks after this. So patient went home on post-operative day five. He had resolution of his hypoglycemia. Um, as was almost expected, he did have a pancreatic leak turned into a type B uh, post-pancreatectomy uh, fistula, uh, but the patient was, was happy with the fact that he was able to avoid a, a Whipple.